Okay, great. Um, so I, I, I actually went, I just <laughs> heard uh, Michael's presentation, which is, which is great. And I, I feel this is uh, some ways, the, these are like a companion, um, companion slide here. Um, so this is uh, kind of, as Frank mentioned earlier, this is from a kind of an end user uh, viewpoint, how uh, CXL memory expansion uh, can help them. Um, and uh, uh, first, I'll talk about about, about the motivation uh, for the uh, uh, for the memory uh, expansion about how we can scale up a server and uh, what's the reason for doing that. Um, we've been seeing this a lot from uh, uh, more like the traditional uh, HPC high performance computing and database uh, use cases. And uh, you know, emerging as um, a previous uh, speakers I mentioned, the AI use case, which actually shares a lot of the characteristics with uh, with the HPC uh, kind of uh, um, uh, computing. So uh, this is uh, the the three drivers for this are, you know, when we have um, ever larger data set. Um, and I think Michael's uh, uh, memory wall would be a good example of this is uh, when we have to process ever larger data set, um, sometimes it's uh, not possible to shard these data set and then process them on a distributed fashion. Um, then in that case, you really need to have a scaled up single server um, uh, to handle that. Uh, we have seen this in the genomics uh, case most recently, but it's true for other kind of uh, simulation as well. Um, second one is a uh, uh, faster time to result. You know, comparing a scale up solution versus a scale out kind of solution. You know, when you have a scale out solution, which is like the most typical way that people solve these large problems, uh, distributed system will also increase, uh, in, introduce overhead uh, in terms of um, you know, cross node communication, lower CPU uh, utilizations. So by consolidating all these work into a larger node, if it's possible, then uh, we get some benefit. Here's an example uh, is, uh, um, this is uh, from genomics uh, uh, workload, uh, Metabat. Um, they produce, they process large um, um, uh, gene, gene kind of sequencing uh, data. And um, previously, uh, this is our friend at uh, Lawrence, uh, Lawrence Berkeley Lab. Um, they were using a cluster of 100 uh, nodes, each one with 64 gigabyte. And uh, it was taking about two weeks, more than two weeks uh, uh, for an analytic uh, run. Um, and because it's such a large cluster, there's a high chance of a failure in between. Uh, when they were, uh, consolidating all this workload into a single four terabyte uh, node, they were able to reduce uh, the runtime to four days, and then have a fairly consistent, uh, uh, fairly consistent uh, uh, finishing rate without failure. So that's a that's a time to result. And then I think the third one here is uh, uh, this uh, um, TCO total cost of ownership, or more specifically higher performance to cost ratios here. Um, I'm using an example of um, uh, SQL Server. Um, this is um, very much uh, like an OLAP um, uh, uh, database, right? Analytics uh, uh, database. And we run some tests um, on a single baseline, uh, uh, 64 gigabyte node. Uh, let's assume this is a baseline uh, query per second. Um, if you are, if you have to support um, more queries per second, one solution is scaling out, uh, you know, additional with additional servers, right? Um, so the cost of this um, is additional server itself, but also the software license cost. You have to deal with, uh, usually these uh, enterprise softwares are licensed on a per CPU basis. And, um, you know, if you run like the, uh, SQL Server, for, for instance, the price is about $7,000 per year per um, per CPU core. Um, and um, when you do this kind of scale out solution, you increase the CPU core usage and then the software license cost is just often just as much, if not more than the server cost itself. Now with a CXL memory expansion, 
we have other opportunity to actually scale an individual server. So we can support the same kind of 2x uh, queries per second by just expanding the memory on the existing server. So that way we can cut out the additional server costs as well as additional software costs based on CPUs. So those are the uh, kind of the motivations from an end user standpoint, why we want to do this uh, CXL uh, memory expansion to scale up a server. And uh, now um, it's a, uh, maybe I jumped the gun a little bit. Um, so like, a, but, but like scaling up a server, particularly on the memory side is, uh, is there, there are challenges. Um, and then uh, we can probably group them into a couple categories. One is that uh, uh, there's a limited uh, dim slot on the motherboard. Um, so you, there's only so many modules that uh, memory modules that you can use. Um, I, I think pretty much as uh, Michael, as you have seen in Michael's presentation earlier, there are limitations on the capacity uh, and the bandwidth that's, uh, uh, that will be available from these uh, limited DIMM slots on motherboard. Um, and then also because of this uh, limited um, uh, slots, uh, if you want to go up in memory, you essentially have to use these high density uh, memory modules. And these uh, high density modules, particularly at um, you know, 128 gigabyte uh, kind of uh, capacity, their costs go up significantly. It's a, not just the, it's a per gigabyte cost almost uh, triples uh, because of all the manufacturing um, technology limitations that we have. So there's a, there's a, there's a big uh, component of this challenge is cost related. And what I like to go through in this presentation is um, how uh, CXL memory expansion can address these issues uh, along with our memory machine um, uh, software uh, so that uh, you can essentially have the capacity, have the bandwidth that you need um, at the cost uh, without uh, impacting the application performance. Uh, basically, you know, have the cake and eat it too. Um, so this is uh, maybe a, like a refresher on some of these um, memory machine, uh, memory, CXL memory expansion um, alternatives. Um, I think uh, Linesh had uh, gone through the E3.S modules. They're uh, easy to load and, um, you know, just, you can, you can add or remove them just like uh, SSDs right in the front of the uh, server. Um, However, they're, they're usually in uh, fixed capacity. Um, I think we have seen um, uh, 100, 100, 128, um, 256, or even up to 512 uh, uh, gigabyte uh, models um, announced. And uh, they're typically at, um, you know, kind of by eight uh, PCIe lanes. So, um, so there is a, that's a, that's a bandwidth. Uh, on these uh, E3.S modules. Um, next up is uh, kind of the adding card, uh, PCIe uh, adding card that we can connect onto the PCIe slots. Um, and then uh, um, they come with their own kind of uh, dim slot. Uh, so you, can, you have the flexibility uh, to populate them with a different uh, density. Um, you know, they can go up to uh, two terabytes per card on these, uh, you know, eight DIM kind of uh, uh, systems. And uh, in terms of uh, memory bandwidth, they can go up to uh, 16 um, uh, PCIe lanes. Uh, so it's about, um, uh, you know, for reference, it's about like a one DDR5 channel of uh, bandwidth. Um, and I, I, I mean, I think uh, from a previous uh, uh, presentation, there are other alternatives from, um, uh, from a hyperscaler standpoint, you have the um, you have the dedicated uh, kind of a, a connector and board um, configuration. But this is from a from an end user. These are the more common configurations. So the next slide is um, is actually like the money slide. <laughs> um, here, as uh, um, uh, Frank uh, mentioned, is that we have uh, we have been working with some customers on how to enable their uh, scaling up their, basically their compute node 
uh, within their budget, uh, right? And then um, this table is just comparing the different um, configurations. Um, I, I'll go through the, this table uh, columns first. On these three uh, columns here, uh, this is the total capacity or the size of uh, memory um, on a system. This is the total memory cost. Uh, this is a per gigabyte cost. These are the memory slots or, um, or, or DIM modules we populate on the motherboard, right? I, I think, um, um, you know, either you can call them uh, DRAMs or like a socket mounted uh, DRAMs to be more exact. And then uh, since we're looking at these rather large memory systems, so I'm focused on using the adding card. So these uh, columns here are, you know, talking about the type of uh, adding card, the number adding card, and then the type of uh, DIMMs that we uh, populate them with. So let's look at one example. One example is uh, like a four terabyte server. So if you're able, to, if you are to, uh, Build it using um, uh, using Intel um, uh, Intel do socket uh, CPUs. Uh, you have um, thirty two uh, DIMM slots uh, available um, using one hundred twenty eight gigabyte per DIMM. Uh, this is we can build a four terabyte system, and then this is uh, essentially the cost, and then the per gigabyte um, cost associated with these. Uh, 128 gigabyte DIMMs. Um, with the CXL expansion, we have another opportunity to reduce the cost. Uh, essentially, we can uh, shift to use a lower cost, lower density, uh, 64 gigabyte um, uh, DIMM uh, modules on the, uh, and, and these are DDR5 as well, they are all DDR5 on the motherboard or the, the socket. Um, and uh, make up for the shortfall using uh, adding card uh, memory expansion. So uh, this is using a uh, um, four adding card, each one with eight um, uh, DIMM slots and uh, 64 gigabyte DDR5. Uh, with this configuration, you end up with the same kind of uh, total capacity, but at less than half of the cost uh, for memory. Um, you can even you can even further optimize this by using DDR4, and then we do have some partners that's uh, building um, DDR4 enabled uh, adding card. So with a DDR4, um, 128 gigabyte um, uh, DIM, uh, we can uh, you know reduce the ASC card into two ASC card, and then the total cost of uh, the system can go up. Okay, can you even uh, be reduced uh, further. Um, other example of, um, let's say if you want to build a higher um, higher memory and capacity server, uh, eight terabyte server, again, like uh, the common way to do it is probably use, instead of do socket, uh, you use a eight, uh, sorry, you use a four quad uh, socket system. Therefore you have a more of these uh, DIMM slots available. Um, and then this is just on the memory cost alone uh, is about uh, $90,000. Um, uh, with uh, CXL expansion, what we can do is we can shift back to a do socket server uh, using um, you know, more of these uh, AIC card. Um, and uh, you know, again, we can probably reduce, we can reduce the total cost down to uh, about half of um, of this cost. Uh, likewise, you can, um, you know, I, I mean, you can play around with all these uh, numbers to build uh, different configurations to build um, uh, 11 terabyte uh, system uh, at, you know, pretty reasonable uh, memory cost here. Or if you wanted to go out, out you know, you can build a 32 terabyte um, uh, system, but probably at, uh, at a significantly more cost. Um, so this is uh, this is uh, kind of the different configurations and uh, the memory cost. Um, so as you can see, CXL enable you to achieve um, significant uh, half 
probably 50% saving on the cost side. Um, here are some more of uh, these uh, uh, servers that can um, uh, can work with the CXL expansion card uh, even today, right? This is uh, from Supermicro, but um, uh, we have also seen this from uh, Lenovo as well. Uh, in fact, uh, I think Astera Lab um, had a system with a Lenovo server at uh, DesignCon uh, that was uh, showcased. Um, and uh, you know you can have uh, various kind of uh, uh, to you for you kind of uh, uh, do socket quad socket systems like this uh, this particular to you do AMD uh, server can take up to four 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 um, a CXL um, adding card um, you have a for you system that can take up to eight uh, expansion card uh, that's these are the these are the configurations here. Now, we talk about the cake. Um, there's some. There's, a, there's always some kind of trade-offs. Um, with the additional kind of capacity from uh, and bandwidth and uh, from this uh, uh, add-in uh, card, what you see is that there's a more complex uh, uh, memory uh, um, hierarchy. And then this is a kind of the architectural slide. Uh, for a dual socket system. You have uh, CPU zero, CPU one. Each one of them have their own local DDRs. Uh, they're connected through um, UPI in case of Intel and uh, Infinity Fabric in case of AMD. Um, and then in addition, there are additional NUMA node. Each one of these um, um, uh, adding cards are its own kind of, uh, its own uh, NUMA node. We, um, they're referred to as a headless NUMA node, which is a NUMA node that doesn't have its own compute, but it has a, but it has memory. So this is an architecture. And um, if we draw down a little bit more detail, uh, you can see is that um, these, uh, there's, uh, for that, for this configuration here, right? Uh, we'll have um, a total of uh, six NUMA nodes. And um, assume your application or process is running on CPU zero, uh, each one of these NUMA nodes will have a different um, characteristic in terms of uh, capacity, latency, and uh, bandwidth. Um, if your process is accessing the local memory, uh, it has the lowest latency, um, uh, highest bandwidth, because we're assuming it's fully populated, um, and uh, if you're accessing the memory across to a different processor, it's a one Yuma half away. So there's additional latency here. And uh, the bandwidth is actually shared between these. Um, um, so if your application is running on CPU zero, and then when you're accessing either these uh, Numa one, Numa four, Numa five, all the memory bottle, the bandwidth bottleneck will be actually between these uh, uh, UPI uh, link between these two CPUs here. So uh, likewise, uh, if you try to access um, from um, CPU zero to NUMA four, you're it's two, two NUMA hops away. So you will have increased latency. And then the, uh, the application performance uh, could actually be impacted by this. Um, one impact of this is um, the latency, right? So if you have a frequently accessed a memory page um, that's located in the, let's say from an, in the NUMA 5, whereas your application is running on NUMA 0, uh, you would have this additional latency that you have to uh, contend with, and that impacts application performance. The other bigger, um, I. I would say the other impact uh, is on the bandwidth. So uh, if you have these uh, frequent uh, cross NUMA memory access, um, it's possible to saturate a particular um, uh, link. And uh, uh, when you saturate uh, that uh, uh, bandwidth, the latency goes up significantly. So it's much bigger than, the, uh, you know, like the 100, 200 
nanosecond, uh, it could go up to, you know, um, a, a thousand uh, uh, nanosecond or so. So this is actually what we had measured. Is that normally if your throughput is uh, within the bandwidth limit, this is very reasonable kind of theoretical, similar, very, very close to uh, theoretical kind of latency. However, when you saturate the bandwidth, then the latency can go up significantly. And then that uh, could even go up to the level that it causes a machine check. So it's no longer just a performance issue, it's actually uh, correctness or um, uh, your job may fail. So these are the, uh, that that's actually where we come in uh, from a memory machine perspective. Uh, I mean, we, our, our product is called uh, Memory Machine X. Um, and uh, what we do is uh, essentially mitigate all these um, um, impacts, both in terms of uh, latency and um, uh, bandwidth uh, impact. Uh, and what specifically we do is that we continuously monitor the application's memory access pattern, and then uh, we optimize the data placement uh, across a human node so that we uh, would um, give you the highest uh, uh, performance. Um, here's a, here's an example uh, of um, MySQL and TPCC uh, benchmark. Um, I have uh, the transaction TPS, transaction per second TPS on the left side and um, uh, P95 latency on the right side. Um, these are the system configurations. It's the same same CPU. I, I believe it's a, it's an Intel CPU. Um, originally, we have um, 64 gigabyte uh, memory. It's all on the socket. Um, uh, so this this is <clears throat> excuse me. This is a uh, TPS, and uh, uh, we measure the same with the same kind of uh, benchmark. We measured it with um, additional CXL uh, memory and additional 64 gigabyte of CXL memory. So you already see a boost here. Um, however, because of all these uh, different uh, uh, latency related um, issue here, is, uh, we haven't really reached the full potential here. Uh, when we add in the memory machine uh, software for the tiering, we actually see another boost uh, in terms of uh, both the transactions per second, as well as the reduced uh, tail latency here. Um, and then just for uh, reference, um, we ran the same benchmark on a fully populated uh, 128 gigabyte on the socket. Uh, so you do see a you do see a higher kind of a transaction per second. Um, but if you were to um, do that uh, cost performance ratio, um, this is a, this is actually a sweet spot here is that we we can give you with uh, um, CXL memory expansion and uh, memory machine software, we can give you like a, the highest um, performance per cost or vice versa, the lowest uh, uh, cost performance uh, ratio. Um, the next slide is uh, some of, uh, I, I think, um, I, I think uh, Michael said it really well, um, is it takes a village, right? So um, so we've been working with our partners um, uh, to have these, uh, to build out these systems, right? And uh, um, uh, so, we can get in the hand of the end users. So this is a, um, a selected sample of the um, adding cards uh, partners that we uh, we are working with. First up is a, a Star Lab the A one thousand. Uh, if you haven't seen the picture, this is a this is a this is the A one thousand. Uh, I actually got my I saw the real uh, device this morning, and uh, it, uh, it it looks great. Um, uh, Smart modular has uh, um, has other system that uh, that's uh, it takes a four dim uh, slot and it's a single width so uh, you can fit into uh, more servers. They also have the eight dim system um, and then we're also working with another partner uh, that uh, uh, that's uh, sampling their system as well. So this is a this is a picture of it. Uh, this is uh, 
this is a smart modular system that has a four dims um, mounted with a single with a single width. Uh, so they are, um, I, I, in general, I think like uh, what we're seeing is more, there's both more of this uh, awareness and demand for this, as well as the ecosystem coming together to provide a solution to meet those demand. Uh, so this is a call to uh, action here. Uh, you know, if you have any questions or feedback, I'd uh, love to hear your feedback. Please reach out to me. Um, you know, that earlier spreadsheet, um, I also have analysis for AMD based system, uh, as well as various multiple configurations. So, you know, uh, if you're interested, please reach out to me. Um, and here's uh, also a link of um, all the wonderful uh, memory fabric um, forum and uh, partner content that uh, uh, that you can see. So uh, feel free to connect with those. Um, and that's pretty much my slides. Um, any questions?